Hey there, thanks for plugging in to RTD News Updates. As always, if you find the articles that will be shared today to be informative, feel free to share them with family and friends to help them become more monetarily aware. And also, if you're new to RTD, click the subscribe button below for more RTD News Updates and interviews. Let's get into the news. So here we are. Here's an overview of today's articles where I'm going to go through. First one being, Go Yuan, post-dollar world order emerging in Eurasia. Second one, countries are getting ready to ban cash. Third, Central Bank Digital Currencies, a Revolution in Banking. Fourth one, China's holding of U.S. Treasuries far to lower since 13, 2013. And the last one, five things to watch on the economic calendar. So uh, other than that, let's get into the art articles. Here's a uh, great article out of Sputnik, and it's entitled Go Yuan, Post-Dollar World Order Emerging in Eurasia. And it's a very lengthy article, but very um, detailed in the fact that it's kind of it's trying to portray rather that, you know, the whole gold rush happening out um, in the Eastern Hemisphere with Russia and China is all designed towards one day basically backing the Yuan or Renminbi with gold. And so basically the author of this uh, article here just takes it back, you know, uh, into what's going on with the Shanghai Gold Exchange coming live this past April and how one thing that differs it or distinguish it rather from um, other markets is the fact that, you know, if you don't have, if you, if you don't have gold, yeah, I don't like this. Here's a great article from Sputnik, Gold Yuan Post Dollar World Emerging in Eurasia. And so the author of this uh, article here basically trying uh, to paint the idea that the reason that there's such a gold rush out east is for the purpose of one day um, establishing a gold yuan that will compete against the dollar. And so the author pretty much lists various events that have taken place over the last uh, couple months, especially this year, and what's happening on October 1st when the yuan officially becomes a part of the uh, SDR basket. And just to give you an idea of what's going on here, it says, a post-American and post-dollar multipolar world is struggling to be born. In an interview with Sputnik, geostrategist analyst Matthew Mavic and CNTV editor Tom Greger shed some light on current geopolitical trends and prospects of Eurasia's integration process. It says, back in April 2016, China launched a yuan-dominated gold price fix on the Shanghai Gold Exchange, which in June, Hong Kong exchanges and clearing LTD signaled its readiness to introduce a physically delivered gold futures contract. Settled in the yuan and the U.S. in September. Simultaneously, Beijing accumulating these precious metals at a steady pace. According to the Gold Council's latest charts, China's official holdings is at 1828 tons, if you want to believe that, up from 3,000 or 395 tons in 2000. Meanwhile, China is pushing ahead with the internalization of its currency on October 1st. The International Monetary Fund basket will be officially expanded and to include the Chinese yuan. It seems that Beijing is seeking to boost demand for the yuan at the expense of the U.S. dollar. That gets into the gold yuan as viable alternative for the U.S. dollar. These developments have prompted a lively debate regarding uh, the possibility of a gold back when Mimbi can pick the dollar and China's increasing role on the bullion market. And I thought this quote here was quite interesting. It says that the recently opened Shanghai Gold Exchange differs greatly from the London Gold Exchange in one fundamental area. In Shanghai, Buyers take physical delivery of gold, whereas in London, deals in paper-based gold future contracts. In Shanghai, what you buy is what you get, whereas in the West, gold is a virtualized commodity. And then it goes on to explain a little bit about the history of gold here in America. And it says, precious metals like platinum gold and silver from universal standards of exchange in their own right, especially during times of economic uncertainty and currency volatility. During the Great Depression, the United States prevented the emergence of an alternative instrument of exchange, i.e. currency, through Executive Order 6102 in 1933, which forbade the hoarding of gold, coin, gold, bullion, and gold certificates within the continental United States. In fact, the U.S. government efficated the monetary coup on behalf of the Federal Reserve, the analyst pointed out, highlighting that the White House almost forced the dollar upon the Americans. So he goes on to list several other things. And what was most interesting is this article here, or this you know, quote here from a recent event in Australia. It had to do with the confiscation of a private stash in someone's residence as a way for, I guess, the Australian tax office to kind of you know, limit alternatives for their people there, which kind of makes me think about what could happen possibly here. And it says, governments routinely prevent the rise of alternatives 
to their currency monopoly when the economy turned south. Last week, the Australian Federal Police confiscated a whopping 5,465 uh, ounces, 100 ounces of silver worth roughly $106,000 from a home in the state of Queensland as part of a larger series of raids instigated by the Australian tax office. The message seems clear. Private gold holdings may not be viably, viable or rainy day hoard, not in the West. Then it goes on to talk about how China is, is facilitating more things with that uh, South, uh, as I hear, the, the Silk Road Initiative, which is trying to link you know the East to the Western part of Europe, and how they are really the best to get more involved and to be of service to more countries, especially developing nations with all types of funding and things like that with the invention of the Asia uh, Asia Infrastructure Investment Bank and those, so forth. So great article here, but definitely something is moving and happening in the monetary world and has a lot to do with precious metals. So great article if you want to check it out. Here's a great article from the Daily Reckoning in Australia, and it's, it's uh, quite interesting how uh, it's entitled Countries Are Getting Ready to Ban Cash. And so just more to the concept of you know cash becoming extinct uh, down the line of it just because of convenience sake you know not too many people carry large amounts of cash on them anymore because we're in a digital age so I thought that the, the way to start off was quite interesting it talks about Pablo and Rusty's is a successful Sydney based coffee roaster and so basically they're just they just opened up not long ago in Australia and they have uh, no interest in receiving cash it says they only accept the payment methods are credit cards phones or smart coffee cups yes those colorful cups with a chip that are spring uh, was a spring at coffee shops everywhere Wait, no cash at all? Isn't that illegal? Then it goes on to say that you know it's not illegal in Australia to not accept cash. And then it gives a little quote here from the RBA's um, uh, Australian National Bank's uh, website. However, however, all the transactions are to be Australian currency unless otherwise agreed or specified. And Australian currency has legal tender status. Australian banknotes and coins do not necessarily have to be used in transactions. And refusal to accept payment in legal tender notes. Uh, bank notes and coins is not unlawful and so basically just uses this example here from Pablo's and Rusty's coffee as an example of more retail stores that will begin uh, and have begun basically just saying we don't want cash and what was interesting is it said that it quoted them as saying that since uh, going cashless uh, your insurance premiums go down cash handling errors go down risk of these uh, a theft goes down and time it takes to cash off and go to the bank at the end of the day is eliminated and so just more conveniences that encourage the idea of removing cash and then it talks all about you know Sweden Switzerland Finland are aiming to put an end to cash by 2025 to fight against criminal activity and fraud and this talks about how Sweden make uh, cash is makes up about two percent of the value uh, was actually in circulation then it goes on to talk about in Latin America Ecuador is the first country actually issued a full digital currency uh, via cell phone because most of the people in our country uh, don't have bank accounts and so but it says everyone has cell phones so they have a currency controlled by the central bank that everyone can use via their smartphone or just phone in general then it talks about in Australia how the big push for cashless is underway and then by 2022 they expect to have pretty much weaned out the concept of accepting uh, cash for transactions and then it just plays into the whole digital currency push that is underway and that's which seems inevitable at the fact that it's just easier and convenient especially for the younger generation who really have no monetary awareness whatsoever of the liberty behind having something that belongs to in your own possession at all times uh, won't really resist it or fight against it so uh, it says digital money will also be easier to manipulate printing money negative interest rates fees bail-in deposit freezes will be simpler to implement after all you will have no choice but to have all your money in the bank and savings outside the system will be nearly impossible unless you hold physical gold or silver so interesting article here if you guys are interested in checking it out definitely uh, interesting read here's a great article from the web of debt blog and it uh, has to do with the whole idea once again of central bank digital currencies a revolution in banking uh, by Ellen Brown who was also a former guest uh, several episodes back on Rethinking a Dollar. If you guys are interested in checking out that conversation, we actually went over her book, uh, The Public Bank uh, Solution. So definitely a great interview if you guys are interested. And so here, she basically just lists, you know, some of the commentary from several central banks and whatnot. And it mentions that several central banks, including the Bank of England, People's Bank of China, the Bank of Canada, and Federal Reserve are exploring the concept of issuing their own digital currencies 
using the blockchain technology developed for Bitcoin. It says, but Ben Brodet, uh, Brobent, rather, uh, Deputy Governor of the Bank of England, puts a more positive spin on this concept. He says central bank digital currencies could supplement, supplant the money now created by uh, private banks through the fractional reserve lending, and this means 97% of the circulating money in uh, money supply. Rather than outlawing bank-created money, as money reformers have uh, long urged, fractional reserve banking could be made obsolete simply by attrition. Preempted by a better mouse trap. Sorry about that. Words are kind of hard to read. But it talks about the blockchain revolution here and just how blockchain has pretty much invented or gave uh, the central policy makers, uh, the central powers that be, opportunities to really explore this even more. And it talks about how more and more people are becoming aware of it and how central banks are really putting a lot of time in uh, all these types of speech and conferences and whatnot to really uh, begin uh, exploring how to pull this thing off. Which I believe, I'm starting to believe that the idea of blockchain technology, you know, because it came out of the blue from some unknown, unnamed, so Sasha Toshi source type of thing. And I think it's kind of really, really playing into the favor of this whole cash or society, digital age uh, movement that's coming. And I don't think it's by coincidence. So that's kind of kind of makes me a little bit leery here. But anyway, she goes on to talk about banking in the clouds, uh, making fractional reserve lending obsolete. And so definitely a good article if you guys are checking it out. Uh, it's a lot of detailed quotes in here that makes it uh, very informative. So Ellen does, did a good job with this one. So if you're interested, articles below. Here's a great article from Bloomberg, and it's entitled, China's Holdings of U.S. Treasuries Fall to Lowest Since 2013. And so basically here it has a great graph just showing how uh, still the biggest but the smallest. China's U.S. Treasuries holdings fall as reserves drop. And so basically it just shows a decline uh, and uh, lack of interest for the most part. And uh, China continued to uh, support and fund and cooperate with this current uh, monetary manipulation uh, coming from the United States. And so basically it says here, just read you a little bit before you can read it for yourself. China's holdings of U.S. Treasuries fell in July to the lowest level in more than three years as the world's second largest economy uh, parts its foreign exchange reserves for support uh, to the yuan. The biggest foreign holder of U.S. government debt had $1.22 uh, in bond notes and bills in July, down $22 billion from the prior month and the biggest drops in 2013, according to the U.S. Treasury Department, released Friday in Washington. And then it goes on. The figures compared with official Chinese data showing that the nation's foreign exchange reserves were little changed in July at 3.2 trillion, though they're down from a peak of close to 4 trillion, 4 trillion in 2014. The reserves dropped 16 billion in August to the lowest level since 2011. The report, which also contains data on international capital flows, showed net foreign buying of long-term securities totaling 103.9 billion in July. It showed a total cross border inflow including short-term securities such as treasury bills and stock swaps of 140 billion so it's, it's just amazing these numbers are thrown out of trillions trillions four trillion three trillion one trillion unbelievable numbers of just debt that's out there being held by china and they are fully aware that it will never be paid off and so that's what's scary from just the average citizen who's you know concerned with these type of issues here it will never be paid off, and so they're going to continue to print and print and print until somebody makes a move of some kind to kind of uh, unravel this mess. So, interesting article below if you're interested in finding out more. Here's the last article here from investing.com, and it's uh, talking about the week ahead. And it's five things to watch on the economic calendar. And so it has a picture of Miss Janet Yellen here and what's coming up this week from the FOMC meeting. And so just a thumbs through, it just gives an idea of what's going on. Um, Globally and how every all the markets and, and institutions are just all eyes on these meetings that are coming up because uh, they're saying that they're going to play a major part in a lot of decision makings uh, to close this year out. And so the first one and most important one is the Fed rate decision. The Federal Reserve is not expected to take action on interest rates at the conclusion of its two-day policy meeting. Central Bank will also release its latest uh, forecast for economic growth and interest rates economic growth interesting it is an unlikely case of a rate hike the US dollar will shoot higher in the more likely scenario in which rates remain unchanged the focus will be on Fed's statement as well as the updated interest rates forecast so yeah Bank of Japan policy announcement the Bank of Japan's latest rate uh, decision is due uh, during Asian hours on Wednesday the Bank of Japan will also publish a monetary policy statement where it is it will present a, comp a comprehensive assessment of its policies 
right. August U.S. housing data. The uh, Commerce Department is to publish a report on housing starts and uh, building permits for August. I'm sure they're going to be down and then readjusted and down and, and then downgraded even further. Flash Eurozone PMIs for September and the Reserve Bank of New Zealand rate interview. And it's good to say that they'll probably drop as well uh, a couple basic points, whatever they are at. And so other than that, that's what's happening in the news. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Articles are below. Uh, as always, click subscribe to stay in tune with RTD News updates, as well as share these to help people become more monetarily aware. Enjoy your day.